Well, we're continuing our lessons in processing. The fun never stops with processing. And um, let's see here. I'm going to, today, the big thing we're talking about is for loops. And let me start my processing app here, my IDE. And um, I don't want this right here. All I have to do is find out. Here it is right there. Okay. Let me move this over. There we go. Right there. Okay. Now, with this, uh, for loops are one of the most useful and powerful tools. And they're in any, every process, every programming language that I've ever used in my life has had for loops. Okay, now for loops do uh, repetition. Uh, and uh, there are other kinds of loops. And for loops is just one kind of loop. And all loops uh, basically do some kind of repetition. Okay, so let's talk about how we might use a for loop. So in this example, suppose you wanted to draw all of these lines here. And so far, the way we know how to do this is just by writing, using the line command, and writing each line out separately and individually. So here, I'll run this code. And indeed, here we got, we got all of our lines. And there's one line for each line here. Okay, now there's a much easier way to do this using a for loop. Now, let me first copy it into the uh, sketch window, and then I'll explain how it works. Okay, now I don't want, let me move this down just like that. Okay, so how does this work? Well, First, we have our, our size command, which sets up our sketch box. We're going to set stroke weight to be 8, which is what we set it up over here in our first example. Now, the for loop. Let me put a space in here now, there. Okay. Now, the way the for loop works, it's going to repeat the code. Everything that appears between here, this bracket, and this bracket, will get repeated a number of times. So what determines how often it is repeated? It's these statements right in here. We start incrementing through values of the variable i. We start with i equal 20. And we're going to, each time through, we're going to increase the value of i by 60. So we start at i equal 20. And then 20 plus 60 is 80. That's the second value of i. The next value of i is 80 plus 60, which is 140. The next value of i is 140 plus 60, which is 200. And we keep going up until the largest i, which is less than 400 here. So we go through uh, i equal 20, i equal 80, I equal 140, I equal 200, I equal 260, I equals 320, I equal 380. I think those are all the values if I didn't make a mistake. And I make lots of mistakes. And then when we finally increment up to the next value of i, which will be greater than 400, it does not satisfy this test here because it's not less than 400. So the loop stops incrementing. So it will do, it will then execute this statement for each value of i that falls between 20 and up to, but not greater than 400. So i equal 20, i equal 80, i equal 140, and so on. So notice that this determines the x coordinate of the starting point of the line. And um, this then is the 
x-coordinate of the ending point of the line. So it then plots a line for each value of i. So let's run this code, and indeed, that's what we get here. Now, let's just play with this a little bit. Suppose I change this from i plus 20 to i, I plus 60. I mean, i plus 6, i, i plus equal 60. Let me make it to i plus equal 40. There. So now i doesn't increment quite as frequently, and um, we might even get some additional lines plotted. Now here, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's run this and look. We have one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Why? Because it has to go through more values of i, and because they're only increased by 40, we go through more values before we get to the test uh, not being satisfied. So this is an example of using a for loop and how uh, the power of a for loop in doing repeated um, operations in any computer code. Okay, so there's an example using a for loop. Now, now let's just look at this for a minute. Okay, a for loop is different in many ways than any of the code that we've written so far. Notice the braces. So it executes, the for loop executes all the code between these two braces. And the code after the brace is not included in the for loop. Neither is the code before the brace. OK, now inside the parentheses are three statements. It's this, in this parentheses right here, separated by semicolons. And all these statements work together to control how many times the code inside the block is run. From left to right, these statements are referred to as the initialization, that's i equal 20, the first value, the initial value, the test, i less than 400, and the update, i plus equals 40. Now, remember, I should have said this before, when we say plus equal 40, what it is is we take 40 and add it to whatever the current value of i is to get a new value for i. So, this is, uh, this is how the for loop operates. Now, let me introduce another concept here, and that is the, the concept of uh, a flowchart. And uh, a flowchart is a way we sketch out the logic of a computer program without actually writing all the code, and we sketch it out in a graphical way, which makes it easy for us to understand. So let's look at this particular flowchart. And we initialize everything. So we start writing the code. And in our for loop, the initial value is i equal 20. We test, is i less than 400? If, it's, if that's a true statement, we then execute the, these lines of code down here. And uh, these lines of code are, uh, are, are um, this is the line statement right here. So we execute that. And then we update, we do the i plus 40, and then we come back and we execute the test. Is the new value of i less than 400? If it is, then we execute, update, and go back. And we keep doing this around and around until the test is not satisfied. So we get a false response, in which case the control for the program goes past the end of the loop, which is right here. So any code that might be written down here uh, is now executed. So we first execute what's in the for loop, and then we execute any code that comes in after that. Now typically, the test right in here can be greater than, which is what we have right here, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, equal to, this means exactly equal to. For example, if we had i exactly equal to 400, 
Now, I may never equal 400, especially when we go back here to 60, in which case this for loop would run forever and the code wouldn't stop running. And the term for that is infinite loop. So you can have a for loop where the test never comes back false and your computer will just sit there forever unless you force it to stop. It will sit there forever and just keep running the program. Okay, and then we can do exclamation point equal is a not equal to in several computer languages. Now, the re relational expression always evaluates the true or false, the test, that is. For instance, the expression 5 greater than 3 is true. We can ask the question, is 5 greater than 3? Because the answer is yes, we say the expression is true. For the expression 5 less than 3, we ask, is 5 less than 3? Because the answer is no, we say the expression is false. When the evaluation is true, the code inside the block is run. When, the, when it's false, the code inside the block uh, is not run and the loop ends. So let's fix this so the loop will never execute. We could easily do that by taking i. It's the, right there, we'll put i and I'll do i plus 400. There. So I'm putting an arithmetic statement in here. Now, because i is positive, i plus 400 will never execute. So let's see what happens when we run this. It runs first time through, the test is false, and it never does anything. So there, uh, an example of a for loop that never executes uh, what's inside the loop. Okay, now let me uh, let me do another line, another example right here. It's drawing these lines right here. Now. now Look at this. The ultimate power of working with a for loop is the ability to make quick changes to the code because the code inside the block is typically run multiple times. Now, now I've already done this um, and um, uh, where I change the plus equal to and uh, here they do uh, I plus equal 8 and when they do that notice how many times the uh, the, the for loop executes and then does this graph. And um, so, and there's another example here, uh, which I'll pick up uh, in the next, um, uh, in my next video. Okay, so thank you. See you next time.